Pope Francis has left the Democratic Republic of Congo on his way to South Sudan as he continues what the Roman Catholic Church is calling a pilgrimage for peace in Africa. Now, it'll be the first visit by a pontiff to South Sudan since it gained its independence in 2011. Francis is going to be joined in the capital Juba by the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, and the moderator of the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland. The Pope is honouring a promise to visit South Sudan that he made in 2019 when, in a dramatic peace gesture, he kissed the feet of the country's rival leaders at the Vatican. The visit to Juba comes a day after reports that 27 people were killed in violence in central Equatoria state. Mercy Juma has this report. Just outside the city of Juba, a caravan approaches. They are from Rumbek in western South Sudan. For nine days, they have been on the road their mission to welcome the Pope. Congregants from the local Catholic Church receive them and join in song so and dance and offer them refreshments. So we came here to get the time. blessing from the Pope. We call him a prophet. He's now the prophet for us. He will see what well, is I'm here, he will I'm pray for it, and the, the country will change. South Sudan has been fractured by civil war and political instability since gaining independence in 2011. Pope Francis will be in Juba for three days alongside the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, and the moderator of the Scottish Church, Ian Greenshields, on what they are calling a pilgrimage of peace. This is the first time the leaders of three different parts of the Christian Church will be in the country at the same time. The church is looked at as a symbol of hope by many people. And here in South Sudan, the Catholic churches were a center of refuge for many when times were turbulent. And it has continued to play a leading role in the social well-being of the people of South Sudan. The Be In Hope home in Juba is run by the Catholic church and provides shelter to young boys who have fled violence and are separated from their families. Most have been preyed upon by gangs and armed militias. 18-year-old Francis Lado has been here for seven years. I came here because of the war of 2016. I lost my father. I lived in the streets and the church picked me. I have found a lot of support here. I started school from here. My biggest challenge now is that I just turned 18 and I'll have to leave the orphanage at the end of this month since that is the maximum age. I'm scared. I don't know how I'll move on. The home also offers meals to young children from poor households and those affected by climate-related disasters. This is a safe haven for many of them and a place where they can just be children, play and eat. The administration says their aim as a church with such initiatives is to restore dignity to a people whose resilience is waning and the Pope's pilgrimage of peace, they believe, is the boost that their efforts really need. Masi Juma, BBC News, Juba, South Sudan.